uh, it's uh, pretty cold there now. This is the a real reason why I'm here. And uh, I'm so glad to be here and happy to show you my presentation. Uh, the topic uh, of my speech is a Firebase. Anybody works with Firebase? <laughs> okay, for other people. Firebase is a, a cloud infrastructure of uh, services that provide you um, possibility to create serverless uh, backend for your application. And we will talking about it today. Uh, agenda of my speech. Firstly, I will do a short review of Google Cloud Functions. Then uh, we will talk about uh, opportunities of them uh, with example. And finally, uh, we will compare uh, uh, Google Cloud Functions and Amazon Web Services Lambda, pros and cons. Let's begin. Google Cloud Functions. Uh, cloud technologies. Uh, in current time, only lazy people haven't heard about them. Uh, cloud in modern understanding uh, appeared in um, 2006 uh, when Amazon is the time uh, it was uh, online uh, bookstore. Amazon uh, introduced your, uh, his new service, uh, Amazon Web Services. That was the beginning of cloud computing. Uh, now, there are quite a lot uh, companies uh, that uh, provide um, cloud um, services platform. For example, Google, Microsoft, Amazon with uh, Google Cloud Platform, uh, Microsoft Azure, and Amazon Web Services. And uh, let's talk about evolution. Evolution of cloud services, of course. Cloud providers uh, mm, offer uh, so various types uh, of uh, cloud services with different level uh, of abstraction and uh, uh, each level of abstraction uh, offer different level of developer responsibility. Uh, the low level of uh, abstraction. This is infrastructure as a service and uh, Google service for it, Google Compute Engine. Next level, abstraction is a container as a service with Google Container Engine service. Uh, and next level is a platform as a service with a higher uh, level of abstraction and lower, lower level of responsibility of developer. And the last, oh, this Google App Engine. And the last type of services is function as a service. Uh, this is the uh, highest level of abstraction and uh, lowest level of responsibilities. Uh, service for, uh, function as a service from Google named Google Cloud Function. Google Cloud Function mm, uh, provide, mm, uh, allow you mm, to create and deploy your services uh, on the level of one function, not on the level of uh, applications or uh, containers or virtual machines, uh, just one function. Uh, you can uh, deploy your code and uh, trigger uh, that monitoring events in your cloud, uh, start uh, this uh, your function or your function uh, monitoring the events. Uh, for example, um, upload uh, image to cloud storage uh, or um, 
add uh, message to the logger, or you can uh, request by direct HTTP request uh, trigger uh, HTTP trigger. And uh, this year, uh, in the March, uh, Google Cloud team and Firebase team together uh, prepare a new service uh, named Fire, uh, Google, Google Cloud Service for Firebase. Uh, this service uh, provides a set of triggers that monitoring um, Firebase events. Uh, events in Firebase, uh, uh, in real-time database, in storage, analytics, and etc. Next part of uh, my slides is review of new Firebase features, but today my <laughs> speech is not so long, and we will skip it. <laughs> if you uh, have a questions about new features, we can speak uh, late. And uh, we uh, resuming uh, about cloud function for Firebase. This is a set of events uh, which uh, uh, on which uh, was created triggers, and uh, with these events you can mm, write your uh, functions. Uh, for real-time database, on, you can react on write, on create, on update, on delete data, and I won't really read it. And uh, this year, um, on Dev Fest, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Firebase Dev Summit in Amsterdam, Google um, provide new, introduced new services, and Firebase Cloud Functions uh, uh, have got new triggers for them too. Triggers for uh, Firestore, uh, Cloud Firestore uh, for Crash Analytics. Uh, when you, uh, when uh, uh, trigger starts your function, function uh, are getting information about event as a parameters, and you can use uh, these parameters in uh, realizing of your code, and uh, you can um, execute. Other Firebase service inside your function, or third-party services uh, using these parameters too. Uh, what uh, you have to do um, to prepare uh, your environment to writing Firebase cloud functions. Uh, firstly, you have to install a Firebase SDK for cloud functions and Firebase admin SDK. Second, create Firebase project, uh, install a Firebase command line interface, connect them, uh, and you can write your JavaScript code in mm, any uh, text editor, and uh, deploy it to the cloud. After that, uh, uh, your function uh, will be Located in cloud and uh, executing uh, when um, any of events uh, that you monitoring is happening. This is an example of uh, simplest uh, cloud function. Uh, it's working as a chatbot. Mm. <laughs> it's working for classical example of Firebase uh, application, Firebase chat. Mm, uh, there are messages uh, stored in database, and when um, uh, people write new message for chat, uh, this message uh, stored in database, and uh, all, user, all users uh, can, mm, uh, can see it in application. This cloud function, mm, monitoring the uh, event of creating of new uh, user. As, I, as you can see, uh, functions of user on create event. Getting far base, uh, information about this user uh, and using it in 
body. <laughs> Sorry for Russian comments. Using name of this user, uh, Firebase functions uh, put information about uh, this user to the database and all users uh, can see message uh, username, welcome. This is simplest example. And uh, 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 later we uh, to explain classical scenarios of using Firebase Cloud Functions. First scenario is notification of user if something interesting is happening. And this diagram uh, we can see an example like previous. Uh, when a new follower uh, is coming to the project, the trigger uh, is starting the function, uh, function getting information uh, about this user and uh, preparing a Firebase Cloud message and sending it for all user. Uh, this scenario uh, you can use for, uh, for example, uh, sending uh, welcome emails, uh, sending information, SMS, uh, and et cetera. Second scenario is uh, performing a uh, real-time database for sanitizing or maintenance messages. New mm, uh, message put in the database, trigger uh, is uh, starting the function, function analyzing messages and, for example, uh, remove all bad words, <laughs> sanitize it, and uh, put these messages uh, again to the same place and uh, users will see sanitized message. Uh, this scenario uh, is possible to use for example, for counting uh, child nodes of uh, database, uh, convert uh, your text to image, for example, and etc. First scenario is uh, moving uh, intensive processes from your application to the cloud. Uh, this example with uh, converting um, large images, uh, large image to thumbnails. When image uploading to storage, the trigger is starting the function, uh, function download image uh, and convert it to thumbnails. Right location of thumbnails, I upload it to uh, uh, cloud storage. And, uh, application download the thumbnail and can use it uh, instead of full image. This scenario you can use, for example, for bulk uh, sending of emails or converting images, uh, something uh, uh, that uh, when you need a uh, a lot of uh, counting or something, and your application uh, don't need to work into this. And the last classical scenario, and the most interesting, uh, is uh, working with third party services. On this example, you can see uh, working with GitHub and Slack. Uh, anybody push uh, commit to GitHub, GitHub uh, push uh, HTTP trigger in uh, cloud. So a function uh, using Slack post message IP, post this information to the Slack. Uh, and uh, you can see you push commit and in Slack you have got information about this push. Uh, go out. 
Uh, this uh, scenario uh, gives you a lot of possibilities. For example, you can use uh, Cloud Vision API um, for analyzing and tagging images. You can uh, use Google Translate API for translating um, any messages. You can use Google Assistant API for creating um, more bots and a lot of different uh, ways for users. Uh, <laughs> here's a uh, half example uh, with working with Google Assistant. Uh, not now I'll skip it and if we have a time, we'll back to the interesting part of my speeches, cloud functions uh, or uh, Amazon Web Services Lambda for some response. Uh, Google Cloud Functions, the service, uh, so, uh, was introduced as open beta in March of this year. And Amazon Lambda um, provides the, something like it, uh, functions of the service, was uh, introduced in uh, 2014 year. And uh, has a two years of experience more than Google Cloud Functions. We can compare, uh, for example, scalability. Uh, Lambda has automatic scaling uh, and Cloud Functions has automatic scaling too. But uh, Lambda has transparent uh, scaling and you can check information how your services scaled. Uh, maximum of functions. Mm, Lambda has unlimited uh, count of functions. And Cloud Functions has just 1,000 functions for one project. Uh, concurrent executions. Lambda has uh, 1,000 parallel executions per account per region. And Cloud Functions, 1,000 parallel execution uh, per one function. Uh, maximum of deployment size uh, for Lambda uh, 50 gigabytes or uh, 250 unzipped. And uh, Cloud Functions uh, 100 megabytes and uh, 500 unzipped. It's more. Uh, maximum execution time in Cloud Functions more than Lambda. And about languages. You can write functions for Lambda on JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, uh, Python, uh, Ruby, as I remember, and Cloud Function. Uh, now uh, you can use JavaScript only. But um, uh, as I uh, listen on Dev Summit, uh, soon we um, uh, can have possibility to use Java and Kotlin. Uh, dependencies uh, in Lambda. You have to deploy packages uh, manually. And Cloud Functions, you can use packages on uh, where you can uh, write all dependencies and uh, all packages will be deployed automatically. A logic is uh, okay <laughs> with both services and driving is working okay with <laughs> both services too. And uh, most interesting part, pricing. Pricing of this service. And <laughs> this picture uh, doesn't mean that you have to pay by Russian rubles. You can pay in dollars. Pricing of cloud functions. First two million invocation is free. Uh, next uh, invocation uh, will be costed uh, 40, uh, 40 cents for uh, per each. Come to time, a lot of zeros, 25, a lot of zeros, uh, 100 cents. Mm. And uh, Google Cloud Functions has a price uh, for networking. For outbound uh, data mm, and uh, 
You have uh, possibility to use five uh, gigabytes free, and uh, uh, all data more five gigabytes, you have to pay uh, 12 cents uh, per gigabyte. And inbound data is free, and outbound data uh, to all Google IP of the same region is free. Uh, let's try to count how we have to pay uh, for the same uh, function. Okay, uh, <laughs> I will be fast. Because uh, in uh, Lambda, uh, we use uh, less parameters for uh, counting, and Google Cloud function will be more expensive for uh, light function. And I'll try, uh, I, I'm trying to uh, count uh, hard function. Lambda is cheapest uh, too. Uh, it means in uh, uh, every situation, Lambda will be cheapest, uh, cheaper. But we, will t we are talking about Firebase, and uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> with Firebase working on the Google Cloud function. <laughs> this is the reason why we have to use it. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, the end of my presentation. If you have question about skipped parts or not skipped parts, welcome. <laughs>